Good evening to all. Uh, keeping the continuity with my last uh, uh, video, I should say, on the basic search features uh, that we were using in the platform of the ERIC, uh, which is our database. Now, let me move ahead with the advanced uh, search features of ERIC and try to understand how to use it. Now, you see, we have seen the basic features and we have got so many tables with us. Now, what about the advanced features? Are we going to include certain uh, more information from there or not is what I'm looking for. Here, um, I do not know how many of you are really aware. Yes, most of us or I would say maximum of us have, um, uh, you know, got introduced to uh, what I call it as a Boolean operators like and, or and not, I would say. Um, however, the question arises, how many of us really know what Boolean operators are uh, basically number one number two uh, yes majority or uh, I mean there are workshops which are being conducted and uh, you should raise this question also can you please tell us uh, about the boolean operators now before I can discuss a little bit more about the boolean operators I would say uh, let us go ahead and try to understand uh, you know what exactly are the boolean operators are and how to understand them also side by side side now here uh, you will see uh, again uh, you know we are going to focus on the now here the words that are being used uh, I will explain to you how and why these things are also necessary however I may not be entering into the depth of it uh, however try to understand that the boolean operators are uh, important and how to understand uh, you know how to uh, know how many values are there at the back end what exactly is happening and how uh, these things are coming into the forefront for you is also something which is necessary to understand now here first of all uh, see how many um, I would say variables are there now here you will see that yes there is exactly uh, right now in the first case that I'm showcasing to you there is exactly uh, one um, let's say keyword that I'm focusing upon now the next question arises how many truth values are going to be assigned for this one also you will understand why I'm talking about the truth values also side by side because uh, this has got the repercussion and it will be showcased to you later on in the entire um, I would say the research that's why I say there is this uh, timeline which has to be drawn and one has to really understand what these things are also now the formula to find out how many truth values are there for that particular variable the formula is uh, basically two um, I would say uh, then raised to the power of n so that what is my formula okay as simple as that where uh, n is the number of uh, okay now I'm so sorry I did not come out of it so let me just uh, come out of it where uh, n will be my uh, number of variables as simple as that number of variables now you see when i learned all these things i was very much excited and i was trying to do as much as i can you know so why not for each one of you though i'm not going to give you any kind of an exercises out here to do it though uh, when i take the workshops or when i'm teaching this particular paper i definitely go ahead and uh, give the exercises to the students so that they get that flavor of understanding how exactly it is coming in so the formula is to raise to the power of n so one variable so 2 raised to the power of 1 that is equals to 2 so what does that mean p can take exactly two values it can be either true or it will be false these are the only exactly two now what happens if there are two variables p and q the formula uh, the how many variables are there you will say two what are they you will say p and q as simple as that so how many truth values will be present our formula is what 2 raised to the power of n so here this will become 2 raised to the power of 2 that is equals to how much 2 into 2 so that is equal to 4 so when we are assigning the truth values how would you start off for the first variable you will start off since it is 2 by 2 you will say true true false false whereas for q if this is true this is also true if this is true 
when i say this it stands for p uh, q becomes false and if p is false uh, q can take the value of true and even p is false q will take the value of false so these are the what we call it as the truth table uh, for the boolean operators also and later on you will understand what is the importance of these variables and how the truth values are being assigned and why i should be so much interested remember uh the timeline of your entire research it's not just the systematic literature review that you are focusing on it is after the systematic literature review you move to meta analysis from the meta analysis you go ahead with the liter uh, review of literature from the review of literature you start building up your questionnaire whether it is for the qualitative or for the quantitative and the moment you reach to the qualitative you design a questionnaire depending upon these descriptors or the way variables and then you start looking okay the what is the truth that i have to achieve what is the objective how do you i come up and say that yes there is this validity or uh, what i call it as the soundness of my own research so you will be able to understand and see the connectivity so i thought this is the better place for me to introduce even these concepts also so that you can keep a track right from the beginning of your research till the end of the research also side by side now if i have understood these things okay then i can uh, see that operators are of five varieties what are they and either or not not i would call it as the um, uni um, you can say operator now when i say uni that means it exactly works on this one or we even call it as the mono or uh, you know you can say that it works exactly on a single literal or variable choices yours what kind of a word you would like to use it whereas for and and all these are bivariate when i say bivariate they talk about two variables is minimum for us um they can have more than two variables also and we will see later on when i would be uh, coming up with a discussion or maybe introduction to these things uh, later on when i'll be explaining to you now when i uh, talk about uh, what i call it as the uh, by variable okay let's start off with not operator now not means what if i take my variable as p not will be what exactly opposite i wouldn't say contrary now uh, remember that there are uh, differences between um, opposite which i keep telling to each one of you uh, opposite uh, the word is very different to what i call it as the contrary and there is one more word contradiction now the differences between these three think when you are uh, taking care of your variables we will see that also i'll be explaining to you maybe in future not at the moment now when i'm talking about opposite it clearly means that um, you know it has to be in terms of contrary if this takes the value of true then it is necessary that not p will be false it is exactly the i, I wouldn't say uh, opposite for example majority of you if i say what is the opposite of black the instant answer is white however if i say what is contrary to black your answer will be not white it would be non black similarly if i say what is uh, contrary of white you will say non white now this comes in very nicely through set theory and we will understand these things also later on now for the time being try to understand that yes there are few uh, boolean operators which are used specially for this and the most common ones here are and and or and not okay using and combines the terms that means uh, you want both of them to be true just now i explained to you and the search is made according to them if you are using or it means either term to appear for example let's say if i come to uh, let's say your place okay now uh, the moment i come you will ask me ramni ma'am would you like to take a cup of tea 
or you want to take a cup of coffee now uh, you know if i am very smart kind of a kid i would um, so what exactly happens when you give me this option either tea or coffee the i don't have any third option that mean um, you as a guest you are just limiting my options of consuming something for come uh, entering into your house and that is in terms of tea or coffee so out of these two only i'll be able to choose so i'll be going ahead with let's say if i like a uh, coffee i will ask you a cup of coffee if i like tea i'll be asking you for a tea so that shows out here for this one however if i uh, come over for the not searches this means exactly one term but not the other for example if i say okay either or you have given me the option for tea or coffee now i would say okay i don't drink tea so what does that mean and you understand immediately that ramni is asking ramini is asking for a cup of coffee however if you will tell me ma'am just give me a couple of minutes i will prepare a cup of coffee and give it to you i would say i don't even drink coffee then what is left out option for me then then you will say okay ma'am how about a glass of uh, lemon juice or lemonade or uh, you can give me a, a cup of a nice hot chocolate you can give it to me which i love it like anything so you know i am making my options very clear i hope you understand what exactly i'm telling you out here a common reason to use not is when searching for greek life in higher education now this is their example i have given you my example so you can read it from here so that you would be able to understand for example if i am uh, let's say talking about uh, um, uh, partition literature i'm uh, writing a paper on partition now when i'm talking about partition do i have to include uh, even migration partition uh, just think about during the partition time there was a lot of migration can i say am i right in that or should i say that yes there are a lot of people who came uh, who were partitioned you know between the two countries now so using the word migrant is it right for me think about in that manner so here you can even go ahead and you can uh, do that basic uh, advanced I, i wouldn't say basic i would say advanced now this would be much more clear the moment i come over to uh, google scholarly search and you will be able to understand immediately after this i would be going ahead with the uh, google uh, scholarly uh, search itself only and we will see the basic search intermediary and the higher uh, searches uh, using the google search itself now retrieving the full text i have told you you uh, can look at this particular place uh, let me just uh, go ahead and showcase to you uh, let's say collection and i am uh, now interested on online education which i am working right now so uh, this is my basic search. such here i have got download full text i have got this one this is how i'm going to retrieve in case i have got the access to it if not then they would be giving me a link so here i can go ahead and i can click on this link and i can see where does this lead me to and so you can see this is going to springer link so in springer definitely you will have to go ahead and buy you cannot go um, and you know just uh, get it through some other means now here i would like to intervene and i say maximum of you you do not complete your search from here you just end up oh my god i have to spend uh so many pounds that is 34 uh, pounds and 95 cents so you know let me ask somebody else to uh provide me or help me out uh, through their databases if they can get now copy the uh, i would say the title go to google search okay just uh copy paste come to this one and see uh they are this is the linger uh, link springer uh, one that we have got then we have got this one eric and i have seen in eric also i got it as a link direct link however not the access to this one then i book pub 
Now, just click on this one and see, is it the same paper by uh, Suha that is coming in? And can I uh, go ahead and get this paper? Here, the link is there for you. If it is the same paper, no, this is basically for something else. So, I don't think so. You can get it. Oh, no, it is the same thing. Analyzing complexities. And this is, let's see who is the writer. Uh, have they given us? Let's see very quickly. Uh, okay, no, I don't know. They haven't mentioned the name of the author out here. Uh, okay, let's uh, download and see what exactly am I getting it. Now, this is no title, nothing, download this one. So, where is it taking me to? Now, your, you can start your download in 20 seconds. So, I don't know what exactly it is. So, I'm going back. I uh, have a doubt about it. So, I'll be caught. So, let me go back. So, this is also not a nice page for me. Now, you can um, even see if the similar title, you can get it from ResearchGate Academia. And I'll show you later on uh, through uh, once I'll be into the Google search. I'll be getting access to research gate here I cannot see however this is also another way in which you can go ahead and see whether yes it is the same one so uh, ibook.pub is giving you the same thing and here we have seen we have got the option for download so kindly go ahead copy paste the title into the google search keyword uh, don't use anything and just enter and see if you are able to get the access and yes it is by the same author so if you click on download you would be getting the uh, access to the paper and then you can uh, go ahead and here yeah, you can just uh, say i'm not a robo i'm putting it in the public domain and here we go you can download the pdf and nobody can now cap now there the paper has come for you and you click on this and check it out and yes it is the same paper analyzing the complexities of online education systems a system thinking perspective by suha r tamim so here we have got the paper and you have seen so what i am telling you is that click spend some time don't uh, just assume that okay i may not be able to get it so you know i cannot do it so let me ask in the uh, forum or the community or the group to uh, kindly download the paper why don't you try it out all by yourself okay so this is how the things are there for you and uh, you can catch up from there so here we have got now what is the summary that they're telling you so here you can see that alternative eric access routes are using proquest now here uh, I need to add something else before I can wind up uh, the advanced uh, search through Eric and that is um, ask somebody if they have got the access for ProQuest, Ibasco or Ovid. I know maximum of the uh, institutes or the universities or the uh, educational uh, colleges, they have got the access to Ibasco. Why don't you request the librarian or one of your friend or a uh, ex-colleague who is working over there you can request them to uh, search out and send it that's a better option for you or if you are uh, let's say uh, somewhere closer to Delhi or Amritsar or Chandigarh you know there are universities where they have got the access to the majority of the databases you can uh, go to that particular library spend some time um, in that particular library like I have got uh, let's say i card and whenever i visit let's say lovely professional university and i know what exactly is there because when i went to lovely professional universities after the workshop was over i jumped into the library because they gave us the access to the library and uh, you know i asked them what kind of a database they have got so you know there were certain uh, databases and they were able to do and carry a pen drive with you that's what i would say and uh, similarly uh, his what is this university Guru Jambeshwar University they have got this access to JGate which is a wonderful database 
and the uh, people who individuals who are working in that library are also super people they are simply awesome and i really thank them like anything both at the lovely professional university as well as the guru jambeshwar university and uh, you know they did the entire thing and you know i would say within 3 hours i got access to 30000 research papers articles books i don't know what not and they downloaded it and simply they asked me ma'am do you have a pen drive unfortunately i could not carry the pen drive so they went out of the way they purchased it for me they came back i gave them the money and in that pen drive imagine the entire data was present so you know my uh, sharing of this experience is not because i was very happy and i got it or a thank that particular university thing is that it's good to know when you are visiting to a particular workshop or a uh, fdp program then please uh, utilize the libraries which are present and you can get it and you can exchange your phone number and let's suppose right now i want something i specially place a call to that library it can be from jnu it can be um, like uh, different different places that are available lovely professional university is one guru jambeshwar university till date i uh, sometimes if i want something and if i'm not able to get it i simply ask them similarly even if you are going um, uh, to some other university or college you can ask uh, one of your friend or colleague to help you out also so these are the other databases proquest ebesco over uh, are also present and they are wonderful apart from um, you know web of science or scopus and i'll show you even the other ways in which nowadays you are able to get the access those are the contemporary ways of getting the access to the certain uh, ways in which you can get those research papers books etc also so let me stop here and i'll come up with my next database that is on google search in my next video till then thank you for watching take care bye